the beep has been removed from this video. And as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. I'm at Bunnings, that's like a hardware shop, and I've just got some proof that Australia is not for everyone. They've got an area where they have a whole stack of boxes and stuff, and as well, they don't have bags and stuff, but they ask you to get a box. And if you look at this box here, look at that there, we've got a little friendly spider waiting for you. How good are you identifying Spidey, they? What do you reckon that one is? Friend or foe? Maybe to stop someone else from getting arachnophobia, I'll deal with this little Spidey and I'll just send it on its way. Down into another box. <laughs> Why have I got a Dyson in my hand? Well, I have got a Huntsman Spider up just behind our front door. Okay, there it is there. It's not too big. They get much bigger than that. And the Dyson is going to sort it out for me. Okay, I'm ready with a Dyson just on the side here. I hope these spiders can't count in three, two, one. Ooh. I think I've got that body. Huntsman Dyson Spinner. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm outside now. The Huntsman is inside that Dyson there. I do believe it's been given the knockout punch. That's the power of the Dyson vacuum cleaner. And I do believe there's an ant nest underneath this brick here. And I might feed the ants a lovely Huntsman Spidey. Can I do this one-handedly? Uh, the good thing about this method is you're not using an insecticide. Okay, the spider's out with some dust around it. Okay, there's one very dusty and knocked out Huntsman Spider, nice and fresh. And I'll just move it over to this part of the ant nest here. And I'm sure the ants are going to very much enjoy that dinner tonight. I've just taken away some of the yucky dust. And what I will do is present the spider right side up. I think it's far more presentable looking like that. So I wonder how long will it take the ant colony to come along and enjoy that lovely spider meal. I don't think it's going to be very long at all. To see something over a long period of time, you can use time-lapse photography. Initially, I used my iPhone here, and it was near the end of the day the shadows came across. And I thought, I'll build like a little uh, umbrella humpy, in a sense, and I'll put some artificial lights there. And I'll just borrow the camera that I'm using on Spider Tank 3 to take a look at this spider being eaten by the ants. All this was happening in summertime. Probably that's the best way to explain it. And thinking back to this spider, and this is often the case with Huntsman spiders, is they like to get inside door jams. And I think this spider, and I've had them here before, was in the front door jam of our house. And that's sort of one way they can sneak into the house. We have had new windows put into the house many, many years back now. And that stopped a lot of the spiders from squeezing through gaps in the window areas and making easy entry into the house. So the frequency of having these types of spiders around the home is a lot less these days. There's always the argument, oh, you should have just picked the spider up and taken it outside to a tree and they live underneath the bark of certain types of trees or just amongst the garden. Sure, that's one way of dealing with these spiders. I could have used insecticide and it's a fairly clumsy way of getting these spiders. Often they run once they're sprayed and you do not know where they run to. But I do like the method using a vacuum cleaner and the story behind this and me understanding this method goes right back in the early days of my YouTube channel, way back when YouTube was a much nicer place. And there was a comment laid in on one of my videos related to spider problems. It was someone from America and they said, hey Leo, over in the States here, we deal with these critters using a vacuum cleaner. I just thought that's actually not a bad idea and I never really thought of Critter control using vacuum cleaners. Now, way, way back, pre-Dyson era in a sense for me, what I found was the weaker vacuum cleaners, the generic types of vacuum cleaners, and I may have had like an old Aldi one back in the day. Yes, you could suck up the spider, and the spider would still be alive in the dust collection area. And I suppose, well, then you could take it outside and do whatever. But as I've learned with Dyson's, and I've got no connection to the Dyson company, but I do know their vacuum cleaners are very good, yet very expensive. 
When I suck up a spider with one of these vacuum cleaners and over the years I've become more powerful, they deliver a pretty good knockout punch to the spider once it gets into that chamber and it starts spinning around. Rarely ever does a spider come out of there alive. Maybe the nicest aspect to using a vacuum cleaner as pest control is the spider isn't affected by insecticide so I can then enter it back into the circle of life in a sense and the ant colony gets to feed from the spider which in real nature that would have been the end case of the spider. I remember back when I found the spider on the path just up the road from where I live and I think it got to the end of its life and there was just a whole swarm of ants uh, pulling this spider apart and it was quite dynamic watching what was going on there. I think from memory it was like in a summertime period as well and that's when the spiders and the ants are most active. Ants are complex creatures and underneath the paver here there's the black ant colony there but right next to it is also the green-headed pony ant colony. Now I'm not exactly sure how these two ant colonies live together. I'm not sure whether the black ants become sacrificial for the pony ants. I'm sure an ant expert can explain it to me. But with the camera set up on the huntsman spider, it's a very dynamic area. It's only a small part of the backyard, but it's amazing the amount of critters that zoom by the camera lens. And maybe what I should do is put a separate video up of just the time lapse that goes on for a very, very long period of time and then you'll be able to see all the things that happen. It's a very interesting thing to see how different ants appear at different times when they're pulling apart this spider. And doing this time-lapse video of the spider being eaten by the ant colony reminds me of a video that I did a long, long time ago, way, way back in the early days of my channel. And it's funny, it was a video I had troubles with, and it it steered me away from doing these styles of videos because the video was flagged by the systems and I think it was deemed to be too graphic. And this is the problem of YouTube. They don't really say or explain to me in which way is this too graphic. We're dealing with something of nature. We're looking at something which is a natural process. But a constant has been with all of the flagging systems and the AI bots is when something is demonetized, when something is turned into a kid's video, when something is flagged by community guidelines, they never tell you the part of the video that's the problem. You've got no way of fixing up where the problem is. And I've always had that feeling. It's a bit like a tap on the shoulder from the system. Don't come here again because we're telling you maybe we don't want to see this style of video. If the system told you where the problem is, really, I would be a much happier person. I think any producer on YouTube would be, but... The system plays dumb when it comes to the detail. Anyway, yes, I'm thinking back to a, a time-lapse video I did of a rat that was decaying in the garden. I think the most miraculous part to this was right up the end when what was the thing that grabbed the dead rat, which is oh, it was a horrible-looking thing. It was all falling apart and there'd been all sorts of critters through it. Well, another rat came along and claimed this dead rat, and I think it really sends a shiver down your spine of exactly what rats eat when they're scampering about in the garden. And we've had lots of rat problems over the years in our backyard. And as I've taught myself time and time and time again, once you put a camera over something and you study what's going on in front of the camera lens there, you often learn things, you often see things that you would not normally see. And that is going back to the beauty of time-lapse photography because... If you stood there watching the spider on the ground there with the ants doing whatever they're doing, it actually seems like it's in slow motion. Okay, It's a very slow, laborious process in the way the spider gets pulled apart by the ant colony. And you probably don't realise how much soil and dirt gets moved around. The ants are like these incredible earth-moving critters. They move a lot of soil, and if you're watching this in real time, it seems like nothing moves at all, but the time-lapse photography compressors time and you start to see a totally different dynamic going on. Hopefully as I've been babbling on here I've been able to edit up some different time frames of the multiple styles of ants eating up the spider. I think it did rain as well so there was some moisture that came through and that set up a different dynamic. Part of me thinks maybe I will do the full video without any interruption so you can see the total dynamic and all the different critters that do turn up because there would have been some that you missed because I've chopped into the video. 
But another part of me says, well, why bother? Because I have had so much trouble from the YouTube systems. And the uneasy feeling on this site has been around about five years. Some may argue maybe four. And they call it a partnership. And I suppose if you're in a business partnership with someone, you're hoping that it's a fair partnership and your business partner is treating you in a nice way. And it's a thing where if YouTube treats me nicely, well, I'll treat YouTube back nicely as well. That's what partnerships are all about. Unfortunately, the way it feels at the moment is YouTube treats producers in a fairly unfair manner. And mainly you get that feeling from the bots and AI that's used to pull apart your channel and dissect it up into various categories. These systems make lots and lots and lots of mistakes. In the demonetization process, I've seen videos that have been cleared and in a few weeks or maybe a few months later, they are re-demonetized. And I call it double demonetization when I see that going on across a number of videos and it's always the popular videos this happens to, you start to feel targeted. That's the only way I can explain this. You start to feel like, well, what is it about me that the system dislikes so much? Well, I think it's a very naive thought to think it's only happening to me. I'm absolutely certain this is happening to a stack of producers on the site. Now, some of them will suffer in silence. Uh, others will take a little bit of it and they'll just walk away from the site. And as I'm stupidly putting this video together, I really feel like I've got to get away from this site and try to find somewhere else. But trying to find that somewhere else isn't simple because... The other video sites are very clunky and one very simple test I do is I use the search utility in the site to see how good it is at refining a search and bringing up what you've searched for. Most of these other video sites in the search parameters will bring up things that they want you to watch and not the thing you searched for. That's what I call trouble on those sites. Their search parameters and the way you find things often tends to be busted. And I suppose there are some people here on YouTube saying, but Leo, the same happens on YouTube. You type in a certain search for something and you'll find in the videos that it's pulled up, there's ones there that make no sense to the thing you've searched for. And just thinking of something that caused a stack of damage on the YouTube site, and it happened in the early part of 2017. It was called the YouTube Adpocalypse. If you want to understand the nitty gritty about it, you can just Google YouTube Apocalypse and you'll read some stories about it. It's where you had a small handful of fairly popular but rogue producers creating content that advertisers felt very uncomfortable being connected to. Now, what was really sad was YouTube's reaction to this was, well, everybody gets punished. Well, in a sense, the advertisers punished everyone. It wasn't YouTube. But what YouTube should have done was basically grab those rogue producers and got them off the site. And that would have sent a message to the advertiser saying, hey, here at YouTube, we respect your advertising money versus the rogue producers who we're just trying to cover up and save after what went on. And it sort of gets back to that whole idea of, well, if you're really popular on the site and you're making YouTube slash Google a whole stack of money, well, you can sort of get away with blue murder. Now, what's really sad about the Adpocalypse era, and we're well past that now, is it never really recovered, even though the CEO said, oh, there'll be a bit of a rough patch and it will come good in time. Well, sadly, it never did. So unfortunately... The way it works on YouTube now, or should I say doesn't work, is if I go out and let's say buy something for $50 to show on YouTube and I'm making the video about that and that takes time to make and you need video equipment and computers to make it and that costs money. And you make the video, then you put it up onto YouTube and you think, wow, uh, will I get the $50 back that I've spent to show the thing on YouTube? Well, with the way the algorithm is set up now, there's a very good chance I'm never ever going to get back that $50. And that in essence is the failure of YouTube today.